what's up everybody i'm ellie andrews welcome to the jasmine brand live ig live all right excitement fills the atmosphere it's going to be a celebration because we today are talking to social media sensation the hostess with the so much mostest trans activist t.s madison oh yes it's about to go down so if you guys have any questions you know what to do definitely make sure you type it in the comments i am paying attention t.s madison is our um guest today and we are super excited um what's up philly i see you guys i'm in los angeles definitely rep your city let me know where you guys are from like i said we are talking to a uh, social media sensation host extraordinaire as well as a uh, trans activist she has a show coming out so we're going to be talking about so much different things um if you guys have any questions let me know in the comments my name is ellie andrews i'm a radio personality as well as a correspondent for the jasmine brand thank you so very much for tuning in give me one second let me paste this so i'm just waiting for her to come on in let me see uh -oh. there we go what's up everybody okay how is the weather <sighs> okay i think she's here actually excitement is definitely going to be a celebration so make sure you guys are in a celebratory mood we are talking to social media sensation the hostess with the mostest i mean she's got so much so many different titles and now reality star and she's about to take over and be the um have her own television talk show so we are talking to the real t.s madison she is here and she is ready to get the celebration started she actually is doing something with we tv and it's so exciting it premieres tomorrow so we're going to be talking about that thanks so much everybody for tuning in to the jasmine brand ig live we are talking to T.S. Madison, I am trying to have her come on in. Give me one second. Again, my name is Ellie Andrews. You can reach out to me at Ellie Explains on IG. I'm a correspondent for the Jasmine Brand as well as a radio personality. Um, don't forget to head on over to the jasminebrand.com for all your entertainment news and so much more. You already tapped into the IG. I am bringing in the one and only T.S. Madison. Let me see. She can come on in. Hi, Ellie. Woo -woo. Hey, All you. right. Excitement fills the atmosphere. Yes, God. What's going on, Lady Ellie? What's the tea? Listen, I you are the tea, okay? Because your show premieres tomorrow, so we are in a celebratory mood. It is time to turn up one time for the one time. Woo, woo, woo. Okay. Listen. I'm already over oh, here. This is, listen, I, I know okay. I'm with the Jasmine brand right now. I'm with the Jasmine brand right now, and it's like my winding down time. I've been doing press for the last three days, and you know, you know how when you got a, a, a show getting ready to premiere, like you just on your whole press run. I've been everywhere, 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 everywhere. And you so have. All right. So I definitely want to be a part of the celebratory mood. And we thank you definitely for joining the Jasmine brand. We definitely love you over here. I know you're feeling probably, you know, overexcited, but you're probably tired because like you said. <laughs> it's been like every day. But listen, let me tell you something. I'm very excited about it. I have a very a really push share. I have a really, really good show. Like the show is amazing. Um, it's not like what people expected it expected it to be. It is okay. definitely gonna be a whole groundbreaking situation. And the way that it's shot, edited, and put out is definitely what we need in our social climate right now, as far as people of color, yeah. um, LBGT plus people, um honey. Uh, so let me ask you this, because originally I thought it was going to be your talk show going to WeTV. However, this is a reality show. Listen, listen, I'm on it. Um, but however, this is a reality show, right? Yes. Well, currently, 
I mean, it's a reality show, but it's, 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 have you watched the first episode yet? So I did watch the first episode. So I'm really excited because we get to see a behind the scenes, all the work that you put in. I don't, I, I definitely did not realize that I have been watching you for a long time, but I didn't realize that you actually have a whole team. It's, I didn't even know a studio audience was there. That makes sense though. Now that I saw the studio, I like, I'm like, okay, that makes sense. And everything that goes on, you take this very seriously. Um, and which is great because you're doing the work before the work, work, work. You know what I mean? Yes. I mean, listen, I take it very seriously because I put, I put a lot of work into it because I make money, like I, I make money from it. And that's like any, anything that you put work in and you get money out, you gotta take it serious. Now yeah. listen, I wanna say this before we even get started in the interview. Okay. You tell Jasmine that she be on her business, okay? I'm gonna yeah. tell you something, everybody out there watching, if, new, if you get new, if you want news or you want some inside tea, the Jasmine brand, Baby, she be having some credible teeth. I will Thank tell you me. this. The story, you guys put this story out. I, I want to look at my phone. And I think you guys put the story out of me having my own television show coming in 20, I think it was 18, 2019 or something like that. Okay. I was like, who spoke? You know, I remember, remember, the, remember the, the, who did that? Who told that? Listen, you guys' sources are very strong. If you Google and you find, you will see that the Jasmine brand was the first place. The first place. Yes. First. And I do mean first. Thank Jasmine you. Jasmine brand was the first place to even break that news back when, before we, we, we had even started doing whatever. I was like, oh my God. How did they get this tea? And I, I remember being contacted, and they was like, well, imagine, do you want to make a statement? But I was like, ah, uh, uh, no, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, we was on it, but you had to still play, like, I can't really, because you didn't want to mess up with you. And we completely understand that. We definitely <laughs> asked first, and then we're like, OK, no problem. So I'm glad you just said that. Oh, thank you. We try to definitely be the first. So ladies and gentlemen, definitely tune in to jasminebrand.com. That is where you want to be if you want the tea first. Now, we know, we try not to be sloppy. We try not to be sloppy. We definitely girl, but it, was, it, it gagged me because I was like, girl, y'all get the tea, okay? <laughs> so if you're watching out there and you guys, I know that you may jump around and you try to find out which pages have the tea, the Jasmine brand got the tea, baby. If you want the tea, the Jasmine brand got the tea. Thank I'm a you. living witness to it. Yeah. <laughs> so, sister, well, so let's talk so about much. what you saw. Let's talk about it. Let's shop it. Up. Okay. Sounds good. So basically, it's called the T.S. Madison Experience, and it is coming to WeTV, and we can expect so much more than just your actual talk show. Yes, you can. Uh, give me this right here. I'm going to have this box. I got my box. I know that everybody's, uh, they've been sending out the boxes. And I know you got one. And you guys got a box over there. I got my box, the T.S. Madison Experience. Yay! Yes. You did it like a whole rollout, which was super phenomenal. You didn't do the just the regular. You did a whole box. You weren't playing no games. No. Um. Listen, this is something that's very big for our community. And, and it happened all like during the Black History Month. Girl, I'm the first black trans woman to executive produce her own docu-series, baby. Wow. You know, about, about my life, about my journey. You know, I mean, we, and we've had other trans women who've been on television and stuff like this, but baby, I'm the first one to, to, to do it like this. And it's so exciting for me because I get an opportunity to be in control of my narrative on television. Yeah. However, I got to say this. However, WeTV did come in and I did turn the, the reins over to them. And I put the cameras in their hand and, and, and was like, you know what, T.S., um, just give it to the people, give it to them. Like you've been, you've been online this very long time and you've been open and honest and authentic with, with your fan base. Let the fans get over here in the world and see what's going on. And, and maybe in this whole journey that they can really learn something from this. Yeah.
Most definitely. And it's very insightful. I definitely learned a lot. I was really, um, I don't know, I don't think I was surprised, but I was really happy to see your mother and um, you guys' relationship and how you guys were able to bond and through this whole experience and really become stronger. Talk to me a little bit about that because I know she's super religious and, you know, there's a stigma about, you know, religious people not supporting the trans community. Talk to me a little bit about that in that journey. Uh, well, my mother and I's relationship that you that you witness on television and, and online, like it hasn't always been that way. And uh, a lot of it was definitely uh, due to me in a space, you know, shutting my mother out from my life because, because I was raised in the church. And then, you know, when you're raised in the church and you're raised around um, straight people, you know, you hear lots of, of, of transphobia, lots of homophobia, mm -hmm. you know, in the undertones of conversations, especially when you have people talking about other people that you, that you, you don't really know, like, or, or you might be related to that might be gay or trans and they're like, mm, you know, don't like, oh, uh, mm, you know, little gestures, little things that you'd be like, whoa, you know, and I do believe that that really, you know, affected the way that I, interacted with my mother in the early stages of my childhood and it made me separate from her and go out here into the world and just try to find myself and so when all of that happened um it just i just was introduced to a dark world and so i tell people all the time the relationship that me and my mother had is something that we had we worked on and we got to it and she said she said to me that God told her to stop uh, bickering and fussing and fighting with me and love me. And this is where we are in our relationship right now. Um, I don't think that I would be the individual that I am that I am now without the support of my mother. I do wish that I would not have alienated her from the early parts of my transition, you know, so that I could have I could have not been introduced to the dark world that I was introduced to. Hey, Lady Love. Oh, you see people coming on in? <laughs> yes, I see them. Good stuff. They are showing you so much love. But that's really interesting that you stated that without um, that relationship and you actually pushing away, you were pushed to other things that you don't think you would be if yeah. you got if you still was connected to her. I do believe that, you know, and, and, and I, we talk about little bits of my journey, like in the opening parts of the show. Like if, if, if anybody seen the first 15 minutes, you know, it's good. But the but the rest of the 30 minute show. 30 minutes of the show was even more deep, you know? And I, I just really wish that I wouldn't have been introduced to lots of things because, I mean, I, I, I've i garnered baggage from that mm. that's, that I'm taking with me through my journey. But I will say this, I'm glad that this happened with me and my mother so that we are on television and I'm able to display to people what I really want or what I, what I really think that they need in their lives in order for them not to go down the dark, some of the dark paths that I chose or whatever. And I'm, I'm just really excited and really happy that I have my, that I have my mommy here. Most definitely. Everybody is definitely shouting her out saying we go hard for her. So that is amazing. Now you talk about your dark past and different things like that, but I definitely feel like and you would never know it. You have so much joy. You have so much. And I don't know what you deal with behind closed doors or anything like that. But you have so much joy and so much just vigor. You know what I mean? And you're able to really kind of press through everything that happened. Would you say, um, did you have therapy? How did you kind of work through that? Well, I mean, to be honest with you, um, sister, I, I channeled it through comedy. I channeled it through through making, if you're able to make fun of it, it don't hurt as bad. Mm, if you're yeah. able to make a joke about it, it really doesn't hurt. You're able to laugh at it, especially if you survived it. Like there's some stories that I've told um, in, in my journey, in my life that, that, will, that really could have, I could be dead today, but yeah. I'm able to joke about it now. And I'm not able, to, I'm not saying the joke about it like it was just like, like it was a funny thing, but I'm able to, to, to to laugh at it and tell it, you didn't defeat me, you didn't destroy me, you didn't kill me. You're a, you, this is the joke, honey. You know, 
And so this is what keeps me going. Like when people say, Master, you always make me laugh. Are you funny? Are you you witty with stuff? Like I learned that. I learned that in dealing with some of the baggage that I've picked up, you know, going through my journey. Most definitely. And I know I just heard a story that you actually um, was with a guy and you actually ended up getting raped and he stole all of your money. Stole my money, raped right. me at gunpoint, was, was going to kill me, you know, left me naked. And I mean, I, I did, I, I did that. I told the story on Pierre's uh, uh, panic room. Uh, you know, I was going to do promote my show there. Yeah. But the thing about it is that was a very it was a very traumatic thing for me, and I I, it, I was really afraid. But I'm able to tell a joke about it now, you know, to make people laugh. But I, I start them out making them laugh, but also pointing pointing them to how dangerous it is and how detrimental it is. And what's so important for me is I have the opportunity now to go forth in the world and create spaces for myself, which opens doors for other trans women, other people of LBGT plus, open these doors and spaces so that we don't have to deal in those dark paths or go in, the, in those spaces. And if, if, they, if you are in those spaces of sex work or, you know, or hustling whatever for your money, you, you take ownership of it and you don't let it defeat you. And so I really thank God for allowing me to have this space to be able to do these things now. Yeah, I remember you were um, divulging that you actually did porn at one time. I and did. one thing that you saw was the Caucasian men actually running things and making money off of you. And you you made a point that, you know, some people are dead and gone. And these people are still making money off of these. Uh, and off and, of these and money. none of it is going to their families or none of it. Like a lot of those girls died broke or died trying to, still trying to make a living for themselves, you know? Mm -hmm. And if I've never taught any girl anything out here in the world, it's, it's, it's to take ownership of your black skin. Take ownership of your black skin and, and know that, that your black is beautiful and your black is powerful. Own it. Own your black. Most definitely. And I, so I'm sure you going through that experience of seeing the behind the scenes of porn and seeing the behind the scenes of what, how it's being exploited and everything like that. Um, now your message is take ownership of it. So what do you think about everything that's happening with, um, oh man, uh, what is that called? Oh man, um, the the new website that Only, you can use. Fans. Thank you. Oh, 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 thank you. Well, you know, you want me to be honest? Yes. I sat back and looked, and I said, you know what? These people held me in prison. They imprisoned me socially and imprisoned me professionally for for something that they're now doing and that I was teaching in the beginning, like, girl, own your shit. Everybody says, own your masters. You know how they say to tell every rapper and every artist to own your, own your masters, girl. I was teaching you girls this stuff in the beginning and it took the pandemic to come through and shake them up at the table. And all of a sudden, now, you, you un now because you have to survive, you understand my story when I said that I wasn't doing this by choice. This was survival for me. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So definitely, I always wanted to think, like, what do you think about OF just because of everything that has happened and so many people are going on there and actually um, kind of thriving, you know what I mean? Girl, don't you know they're cleaning up, you know, and a lot of things, a lot of times when I look at it, I look at it like some of these people look down on me, ain't that something? But here they go on the doggone only fans making a coin. I told them. I Interesting. Told them. Do you think that African Americans tend to um, not uh, undervalue themselves? Because that was a whole thing with OF too. Because a lot of Caucasians were charging like crazy money for stuff that African Americans were doing for like twenty dollars. When you know how powerful this is. 
and you know how lucrative this is, mm -hmm. you won't give it to anybody else. You won't give it, won't away. Give it away. You own it. You own it. You own it, and you'll make sure that that you know your worth. I know mine, girl. So, uh, speaking of knowing your worth, did other companies actually approach you? Other networks approach you for a show? Um, when I was when I was out and about, um, I, 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 We TV and I have been in bed for a very long time. Um, they've always they've they've, they've always had the, a vision for me but they just needed to know how to put it together. And so because I've had a great relationship with World of Wonder, the people who uh, produce uh, RuPaul's Drag Race, Million Dollar Listing, um, Big Free to Show, like these are the same people who I've been in bed with for a very long time. And we've been working together in a digital space. Um, we were out, we were shopping around, you know, the T.S. Madison story. Um, VH1 was, was very much locked and interested in the situation, but WeTV stepped up to the plate and was like, listen, we've wanted her for a very long time, and this is what we're going to do. I want to give a special shout out to all the people over at um, uh, WeTV for taking this chance, because this is something that nobody else is doing. No one else is doing this right now. We do have RuPaul's Drag Race on VH1. However, RuPaul does not identify as a trans person, and RuPaul is, RuPaul is definitely a pioneer and a queen in the LBGT plus movement, but RuPaul is not trans, and, and I'm a trans woman of color. And in this climate that we're living in right now, um, we're, we're definitely seeing so many trans women being murdered at rapid rates, and, and this is, was a very positive thing for WeTV to do for the trans community. And I, I just think this, it's an amazing thing. I love that I'm with World of Wonder because World of Wonder has my back and they are definitely um, on top of making sure that my story is told correctly, that I'm not in, acting a fool, you know, because we have an entire community to represent. And not just me being trans, girl, we have a black community to represent. Exactly. I myself am tired of seeing so many black people and black shows and black make us look a certain way. And for me, I was not walking in the door in the reality world. I don't care for what dollar and how much. I was not walking into that world where we're where I'm still painted out to be this way. And, and me being trans is very delicate. And walking into that, that will never I will never put myself in a space like that where I'm I'm being the fool, you know, and making a, a whole mockery of, of a of a of a community that's already marginalized and that's already has a very small um you no know, no visibility factor. I'm not doing it. Yeah. Yeah, most definitely. So you went in there with different things that you wanted to be checked off? Yes. I needed to do that. And it was very important for me when we began taping the show and taping, um, you know, before I really want, made the deal solid, that I made sure that the producers of the show were people of, 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 of color, brown and black people, that the staff working on the show were brown and black people, were black women, were black, were, were black people, were LBGT people. I made sure that every marginalized type of person was here working on the show so they can understand, they can appreciate the project that they're working on, you know, to make a difference in the world. Yeah, that is so phenomenal because that's one thing that's all a lot of times missing. You see people in front of the camera, but the people, like you said, with the whole porn situation, the people who aren't making the money, the people who are behind the scenes are not us. And so I wonder, do you feel a lot of pressure just like to hold up the banner, do you feel a lot of pressure? Uh, I do because you know I'm not uh, I'm not cookie cutter, and I know that there might be a place that I I might get in a space where I may say some wrong shit. You know, I've been you know unapologetically me from day one. But what I respect and love about WeTV is that they've known that they've known that for years. Like they know that, like they got my back. The world of wonder got my back. And, you know. It's a, I could say some wrong stuff, girl. You know, you know me, girl. You don't see me, girl. You know, I, but what I'm doing now is I'm making sure because you, the moves that I make now will 
affect the things that happen in the future. At this point on, once the T.S. Madison experience debuts to the world and open up the, the floodgates, open up its floodgates to the world, everything that I do from this point after the T.S. Madison experience happened will directly affect what goes on in the world with mm -hmm. Black people, with trans people. So it is very important that, you know, I get in a place where I conduct myself, I control my temper. You know, I do these things because I, I, I really want to... You know the saying, be the change that you want to be in the world? Yes. That's why it's a weight on my back, because I want to be the change that I want to be in the world. Yeah, most definitely. I, I am definitely taking questions, ladies and gentlemen. If you guys have any questions for Miss T.S. Madison, definitely let me know. Someone asked in the comments, what are, you, uh, what are your thoughts about trans women competing in sports? Um... Listen, I don't really know a lot about, about about that. I do feel this. I do feel that uh, we need we need we need as much visibility as possible in spaces. Um, I'm not very knowledgeable on you know that that piece, but I think inclusivity is is a good thing. Um, but we just got to watch to see, you know, you know, how it, how it pans out. I'm not a girl that's getting into sports, you know, I, I, listen, I ain't lifting up girl. I don't even want to wash dishes. I call the maid over here to wash dishes. So kudos to the girls that want to get out there and get into the WNBA. Uh, what, is that a place? WNBA? I don't know. WNBA is definitely a place. Who knows? <laughs> Oh my goodness. <laughs> now definitely you mentioned RuPaul's Drag Race and I was so excited. So I definitely have been watching from season one, okay? And I was so excited to see you and not only see you, I was so excited that you kept it 100, yeah. okay? Listen, you're dry, okay? You're dry. And I was like, oh. <laughs> Listen, here's the thing. This is season 13. The girls have been sitting home just like I've been sitting home watching it, like watching the show. Girl, you got to be prepared for what's going on. This is $100,000 that's on the table. You going out here to compete for that. And if I've been at home jumping up and down, like saying, oh, I just want to go and I just want to be there. I just want to be there. Oh, and then having to watch this, the whole series use lots of my catchphrases and stuff like they've been using it for the for years on the show. Yes. Uh, it was just a whole circle moment for me, a, a come together moment. Especially, they started filming RuPaul's Drag Race at the same well, right before they started filming my TV show. But my thing is, you gotta really look at divine, the divinity, and this whole thing, even in the pandemic this divinity in the situation, like it was God's timing because I was supposed to be a judge on RuPaul's Drag Race, but it fell right in order and in time. And I'm, I'm like, I was so ecstatic to be there, girl. You hear me? I, listen, I was ecstatic to see you there. And then remember when somebody did you for the Snatch Game? It was Silky. Listen, <laughs> I love Silky. Silky Nutmeg Ganache, that's my girl. She played me for the Snatch Game and she won. She won. <laughs> I, I went and did a little vignette for her. Like, we did a little vignette. Um, it was for season 11 reunion. I did that. And then season 12 came, and then they called me season 13. Um, I'm so excited for the girls of season 13 because um, it's a lot of talent on the stage. Yeah. Like young girls are coming. They, they're competing for the thing, but they, they're getting to know themselves. And they're, they're, they're being such great representation. They have a trans man on there for the first time. Yes. Um, God, Mick is, a, is the first trans man to ever compete. Uh, I'm so, I'm so, so excited for it. I love Candy Muse, Tina Burner. Um, do you know who's going to win? Do you know? I, I like... don't know who's going to win. I do not okay. know who's going to win. Are you rooting for somebody particular? I, I'm, rooting for, I'm rooting for all the girls because they're talented, but I, I, there's something special about okay. Simone. There's something so special about Simone. She got like a piece, she got a she got a black girl magic thing going on. It's just something special about her. It's just like, ooh. And girl, I got an opportunity to judge uh, the Bossy Rossi Challenge. And I'm coming up next week. Well, to, the day after my show airs, which is Friday, on the Snatch Game, honey. So I'll be back judging the Snatch Game. 
and oh my god it is it's it's really good it's a really good thing good stuff speaking of black girl magic magic let's talk about tiffany new york pollard okay you call her your fairy godmother and she is going to be on the show as well and yes. then you actually ask her to become a permanent stay right yes um tiffany new york pollard is is the queen of reality television there's no i don't care who sits on the throne now or who has sat on the throne she's 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 the mother and i'm moving into a space like where i'm birthing things so what's mm -hmm. the, the, the great thing about it is what better to what better mother to mentor me through this process than tiffany new york pollard and and try to merge as much as i can with her because i'm so appreciative of her lending just her space her star her friendship to me I will tell you this. I remember once the very first time that she came and she sat on, on the bench next to me the very first time, the very first time she made it so easy for me in communication with her because I thought that she was going to be like a diva. Okay. I yeah. thought she was going to be like a, you know, give me like, Oh well, girl, she really was receptive to me. She really let me know that she's been watching me in the shadows and that she's loved my personality and she's loved all things about me. And I'm forever grateful to her and, and gratitude to her for, for her just lending her star and, and coming through and showing me love and just being a part of my life and helping me on this journey because TV is a new space for me. Even though I've been on lots of, I've, I've done guest appearance on lots of television shows. Honey, I've been on The Read, I've been on Janet Mox, um, So Popular. I done been on I done been on so many different television shows, but this is my show in my name that is mine, executive produced by me. So it is a it, it's a definitely a different feeling. Yeah, glee. Look at my look at my people's in the comment. It's definitely a different feeling for me doing this. And she's been in this stuff before me. And so she's the perfect fit. Exactly. So we're talking about the Queen Supreme Court. She will be a permanent stay if she says yes, well, right? Who, who knows what she's going to say, huh? I know. Like, if she says well, yes. The right? is, who knows if it's going to be the Queen Supreme Court? Oh. I, well, tell me something. Listen, tell me something. Are you telling me something without telling me something? I don't know. I just think that you got to <laughs> tune into the show. Like, you know, you got to tune in. We've been filming this television show for a year. And we filmed this thing through the pandemic. So there, there there's lots of things that you might see in the, well, that they that they put in the first 15 minutes of the show that mm -hmm. you saw. Like, we were taping during that time. Like, right. you know, when Sophia was there doing the show. Exactly. You know, we, and that was the first 15 minutes of the first half of the episode. Yeah. So we were taping, you know, during that period of time, but you ain't seen nothing. Like you got to watch the whole season. This it's a lot of stuff that's going on in the season. Lots of things. We tackle lots of stuff. Well, you know, I, that was going to lead me to my next question. Were you a bit hesitant when it comes to like permanent people actually hosting just because of what happened before um when you actually had a show with someone yeah i mean i was definitely hesitant about it like moving forward because you know i just i don't want to ever go through those types of situations again and i never and let's just say i never will but all right i won't but you know it did give me a lot of pause, even filming this, even filming this season of my show, um, which made me make a lot of decisions that you gotta, you gotta pay attention to. You gonna pay attention. Episode two, it starts moving. Episode three, it's moving. Like it's a good show. Okay. It's a, it's a good show. Like you gotta feel the energy. Did you, did you feel it when you were watching the, 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 the 
I definitely did. So when I watched, I was like hooked in, like, oh my goodness, just because, you know, it's one thing to showcase the sh uh, talk show. So that was one thing. But then I wasn't prepared to see all aspects of your life and all aspects of, you know, you talking to Tiffany, you, you know, talking to your mom, you having those production meetings, you calling people out. Like, I wasn't prepared for that. So that was really exciting to kind of see. Well, you ain't seen nothing yet, girl, honey. Listen, I will tell you this. This show has been an experience, experience for me. And it's been an experience for me because I turned the cameras over to the network. Yeah. So if, when you turn the cameras over to the network, you basically tell them, capture me. And so for this reason, I mean, I, I, I haven't watched the episodes like you've watched, like you've watched one, the first episode. I haven't yeah. watched the first episode in totality. I've only watched the first 15 minutes. Oh. Um, but I did tell them that I would like to watch it at home. Like, I would like to see. I want to see me. I want to see me through your eyes. Let me see me through your eyes. So you don't have any control when it comes to the editing. You don't know how they're going to piece together your stories or anything like that. I opted out for some parts of the situation because I didn't want, you know, I don't, if I control it, you're going to get what you get online oh. and I'm going to cut it off. Like when you, when I, when I don't want you to see something, right. Right. Exactly. If I, if I got control into that space, you know, so I opted out to be like, you know what, let me just, I want to see what, let me learn about me through the eyes of somebody else. Okay. Okay. Now we are super proud of you. Everybody is going up in the comments. They can't wait to see the premiere of the show tomorrow. And it just seems like you just keep going and going and getting higher and higher and you don't allow different situations to kind of stop you. Tell me about that process in, when it comes to pushing through the adversity, falling out with people and all that kind of stuff. Well, I know that I got to tell you this and I got to speak to you from an honest place. When you're going through the mess or you're going or, or you're faced with things that, that seem messy, you really don't have the opportunity to look at the, the purpose of it or the divine purpose of the situation because you're going through the mess. Mm -hmm. But when you get an opportunity to get out on the other side and you reflect back on mess and separations and fallouts and arguments and things not going right, when you really step back out of it and you 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 get you look at it like this and you start looking at dates and times and things that are that are in the present some of those things were definitely with if not all of them were right on time if you yeah. follow my dream yes a lot yeah. of that stuff was right on time Things be going on in your life. Sometimes it, it, it seems like everything is falling apart, but the pieces are actually falling right together. Mm -hmm. I, if, 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 if I have never learned anything about, about divine purpose and divine timing, it is definitely me, re, me reflecting back on all the things, all the mess, all the shade, all the all the no's because I've had I've gotten so many different no's on my journey, you know all the things. If I, you know everything that I thought was uh, was something that was detrimental to me actually worked out in my favor. And so for me, looking at that stuff, it just assures me that I'm on the right path of where I'm going. So I've just, I've really started to, and it's not easy because I'm, I'm a control freak. Uh, I want to know the future, honey. Throw me a tarot card out. Let me know what's going on in the future. But I'm, I'm very much so really saying, T.S. Massey, you got to move out of the way and let the shit unfold the way it's supposed to move. Move, girl. Move yeah. out of the way. Get out of the way. You see all this chaotic stuff, and I want to be a be an inspiration to people to come. You see lots of chaotic stuff going on in your life, on your path, on your journey, going wherever it is that you've had a vision that you're going. Let the pieces fall in place. Get out of the way. 
get out of the way. And I promise you, I'm, I'm working on that because I, I got I, I, I listen to God whisper ever so softly, but I still got to get out of the way. Like, God, oh, I want to cuss. Oh, I want to read me a bitch. Oh, I want to, oh, but I got to move out of the way because if I do it, it's going to mess up the process. Yeah, what and that leads me to like, what was the biggest thing that it took you so long to learn? Like a lesson that it took you so long to learn? Stop trying to prove myself to people who already made their decisions about me. I could tell you that right off the cuss. Wow. Stop trying to prove myself to people who have already made up their mind about me. Fuck them. There it is. There it is. <laughs> there it is. And what's the biggest misconception about you? Um, the biggest misconception about me is that I, I, I don't like black women. Interesting. I'm like, what they do that at? Okay. okay. Be, because is there like a specific reason that a lot of people? What? Like, what? I hate black women. What? Are you kidding me? I just and it's just I'm like, where did you get? But see that that just that just falls back to me saying, stop trying to prove yourself in places where people have already made their decisions about you. Yes. So now I'm starting to leave that area alone because I used to be over there like, you, I, you, I. I'm really going hard. Okay. Fuck them. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Good stuff. You know, it, it is Women's History Month. Yes. Um, and we are celebratory about that. And I know there has been some powerful women in your life that really kind of just really made it imprint, especially your mother. Yes. And then you're a woman. So talk to me a little bit about that. Well, I love How are you celebrating? Listen, Black women have molded and shaped me into being the TS today. Girl, I learned I learned how to I learned how to chop it up with a man from a black woman. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Honey, so I owe I owe my entire existence, you know, and, and my I owe my entire existence and my swag to a black woman, to a bad black woman, you know? Um I'm I'm very inspired by by the black women who persevere uh, uh through the countless times that they've been faced with um uh, abandonment from from men and leaving them with uh, a, a children that they have to raise on their own, where they have to be the mother and the father in the situation. Like my mother is this. This is why my mother is a hero to me. She's had to be both of those things, and I, I and I salute and celebrate women um, who are raising an entire family of of men and and women. Um, on their own like that's a very powerful thing you know and we love it when when a, when a when there's a a functional home when there's a husband and a wife together a black black love where there's a black king and a black queen in the house we love that but we definitely must salute our black queens who are raising men out here in these streets you know to be what god called them to be most definitely. Speaking of black kings, do you have black king in your life? Girl, um, you know I love my babe. You know I love my cooking babe. That's my babe. Yes. I love my cooking babe. That's Good. My babe. Good stuff. And so many people are look up to you as an influencer, as a social media guru, as a host. And so many people want to, you know, follow in your footsteps. What are the three advices that you would give someone? I would tell my, my my advice number one, you know the vision, keep the vision to your, keep it. Hold that vision to yourself, one, because everybody's not going to see the vision that you've seen. Mm -hmm. Two, it, it, two pick, to piggyback off of what I told you before, don't try to prove yourself to anybody who has not, I mean, who has already made up their decision, made their mind up about you. Fuck them. And three, no matter how many times you fall down on your course to to what you believe or, or where it is that you want to go, get up. Get up and go. Boom. That is so good. Okay, let me get up. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
I appreciate you taking the time and thank you so very much for showing so much love to the Jazz and Brand and really taking the time to give us your space and being so giving. We really appreciate you over here. And um, all right. Listen, tomorrow. I love the Jazz and Brand. And when I got some hot tea that I want to post, I inbox y'all, girl. I send it to you in the inbox. Let Jasmine know, baby. Baby, she, yeah. she, she, she the she the she the O E E boo. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. me. And make sure you guys are tuned in to the T.S. Madison Experience on We TV Thursday, March 4th, and every week thereafter. Honey, BBB. Listen, are you doing any live chatting? Are you going to be I doing it? I will be. Listen, please tweet your questions today because I'll be live. I'll be answering tweets. I'll be posting about it. We TV is going to be reposting it, retweeting it on 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 my Twitter. Um, T.S. Madison, A-T-L-1, using hashtag AskTS Madison. Now, tomorrow when the show airs, I will definitely be, I'll be doing a live before the show airs. I'll be going live after it airs. I'm going to be very, very, Vicky! Oh, my God, my girl Vicky Fox down here. Vicky, you said that. Hey, Vicky, hey, Vicky. Vicky, said, Vicky <laughs> said she's already watched the episode. She said it's so good. Yes, listen, listen, y'all. Listen, I want to say thank you to WeTV for sending out the screeners box to, for those people that screen the show, the TS Madison experience. I'm going to open my box tomorrow during the thing. I'm going to be down with my stomach open on my live. I am so excited about the show. I'm definitely thanking God for giving me the opportunity to restructure the way reality television is and also to be a, for, for giving me the chance to be the first black trans woman to executive produce her show during Black History Month, honey. Okay, made Black History and for giving me the opportunity to employ so many Black people, giving me the opportunity to, to employ so many LBGT plus people to support women, to do all of these things, and just to be the change that I want to see. Thank you, WeTV, so very much for this opportunity. Thank you so much. Listen, before you go, a lot of people a lot of people are asking, can fans get the box? Can fans get something? Are listen, you going to be doing something? Y'all need to, listen, when I start tweeting over there on WeTV, they're going to be watching what y'all saying. Y'all need to tell, tell them, give me a muck box. No, give me a muck good box. <laughs> listen, all right, so we got to be vocal to WeTV. I see what's going yes, on here. <laughs> all right, well, thank you so very much. Congratulations and many blessings just keep on flowing to you. Okay, thank can't you, wait. Love. To see thank you. The full thank episode. You. Thank you, baby. And watch, watch the series, baby. It's a good one. It definitely is. Well, thank you everyone for tuning in to the Jazz and Brand. Don't forget to head to thejazzandbrand.com for all your entertainment news and so much more. Thank you to T.S. Madison. We will be watching. Don't forget, I'm your host, Ellie And, and make sure y'all post about it too on the Jazz and Brand, honey. Yes. All right, there it is. You heard it here first. All right. Thank you guys so very much. Until next time. <laughs>